When I first saw the screenshots for Projection First Light, I got vibes of the Play Dead Studio games Inside and Limbo. But as I began playing Projection, I realised that the game didn't have the same unsettling atmosphere or trial by death mechanics, and instead it felt like a light world version of Limbo crossed with the PS4 launch style Contrast, as you manipulate shadows to create platforms and solve puzzles. Projection First Light takes place within a world made from silhouette theatre puppets and props, which sure looks pretty, but can it hold a candle to the likes of Inside and Limbo, or is it all just for sure? My name's Gotcake, and welcome to Star or Shovelware. So Projection First Light begins with our character, Greta, overlooking a city from a balcony. She then decides to head off into town after donning a backpack and saying goodbye to Ma and Pa. But it turns out that Greta is either the most unlucky person in the city, or she just has no concept of her actions, as she steals an apple from a flat cap fella who's furious at her, and smashes a bunch of jars whilst trying to take one to capture a glowing butterfly. She then chases said butterfly, barreling away through a construction site where she gives a builder a concussion, and bounces on a police car, causing it to career down a hill and smash into a wall. After her rampage subsides, she's taken back home and sent to bed, but she then follows the magical butterfly out of her room and onward to a journey that she'll never forget. Now, things start off simple with a game. We learn how to control Greta, moving her with the left thumbstick, jumping with the A button, and the X button is used to interact with objects in the world, allowing us to pull switches, push and pull objects, or carry items. The first area of the game sees us making use of these controls to work our way through an abandoned theatre. And there's some really wonderful showcasing of the game's visuals as we make our way through the theatre with silhouettes of objects popping into sight. So the theatre acts as the game's tutorial, teaching us about the different ways in which shadows can be used. Upon completing the area, we then break a box containing a mote of light, which we're able to control with the right thumbstick. From here on in, we're able to manipulate the light mote, positioning it around nearby objects in order to create shadows, which then become solid surfaces for us to walk on. This manipulation of light and shadows is the core mechanic which projection relies on throughout the majority of its levels. Now the game's story sees Greta travelling through five different regions of the world. We begin in Indonesia, though how we get there remains a mystery, as one minute we're in the theatre and the next we find ourselves amidst a jungle. Here we work our way through the dense vegetation, using shadows to overcome obstacles before eventually coming upon a tribe. Now there's no verbal communication in the game, so characters use mime to interpret their actions or emotions, and for more complex dialogue we also get a bunch of silhouetted speech bubbles containing various images depicting the subject matter. This first region of the game sees Greta following the journey of the tribe's archer, who from what I can gather is attempting to stop a bad man from taking over the village. Now I mentioned before that shadow manipulation forms a core gameplay mechanic, and it pains me to say that whilst it's an interesting concept with a lot of potential, I feel that it's incredibly overused in perception and the game relies on it far too much without supplementing it with other interesting mechanics. In each area of Indonesia, you have to create shadows to progress from one screen to the next, and whilst at times they used creative play, such as manipulating the shadow to create a sort of elevator, or requiring us to place objects in locations to allow us to cast shadows using them, unfortunately I thought Indonesia was way too long, used an excessive amount of shadows in areas, and I slowly found my interest waning after about an hour and a half of trekking through similar looking screens, using shadows to climb over walls, cross gaps, or ascend platforms. Now we do eventually get to locations containing actual puzzles, but here is where things take a nosedive and we experience just how poor shadow manipulation can be in the game. Prior to the puzzles, there had been hints that the shadow mechanics weren't quite up to scratch, as you frequently get stuck in them, are suddenly propelled upwards by them, or repeatedly knock objects off ledges by accident with them and have to retrieve them to start over. Now I experienced frequent frame rate issues in some of the more complex areas where multiple shadows are cast, but using shadows to manipulate the positions of boulders for puzzles in Indonesia is where the real shit show starts. Now let's totally discount the question of why the boulders themselves don't cast shadows and move on to what happens when you try to move them, whereby they either frequently ignore your shadow, get completely stuck inside them, or your shadows work too well on boulders, propelling them through solid surfaces. Even when you do get them to work, positioning your shadows correctly to move the boulders is incredibly finicky, and often boulders will simply explode as you try to adjust the position, and I got stuck in this one location for about 10 minutes whilst trying to get the boulders to sit on both these switches. 
So what is no doubt an interesting mechanic turns out to be a bit of a mess. After about two and a half hours I finally got to the end of Indonesia and faced a boss battle against a giant tribal looking demon fella who slams the ground causing boulders to fall from above. To beat him I simply had to position my shadows to cause the boulders to bop him on the head. And after doing this three times he was out for the count, our archer buddy pushed the bad man to his death and once more all was rosy and merry in the tribe. Following this I bid a fond farewell to my Indonesian pals and boarded a boat heading for who knows where. This boat trip saw me lighting lanterns to collect some glowing butterflies which can also be found scattered throughout the game's levels though I'm not quite sure of the use. But then disaster strikes poor Greta once more as she encounters a fierce storm and an even fiercer sea creature who attempts to eat a boat. But then Aquaman shows up punching the giant fish in its face before rescuing Greta and it's at this point that my screen went black for 10 seconds and then crashed. Now I tried loading up the game again and sat through the boat scene several more times but every time my game would just crash on the loading screen and so this is where my journey in Projection First Light ended. And I feel bad for saying this but I was actually a little relieved. Although I loved the game's visuals and I liked how the shadow mechanics were implemented, my first couple of hours of the game had felt so drawn out, repetitive and glitchy that I don't know how much further I could have got in the game before calling it quits myself. Now the game is not all bad, like I said there's a lot of potential here and maybe the other regions get a lot more creative with the shadow mechanics, but what I played of projection felt unfinished, like it could have done with a couple more months of development and playtesting to iron out its bugs and tighten up its levels. So despite me not being able to actually complete the game, I'm still going to rate it based on what I managed to play. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovelware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on the quality and quantity of gameplay and whether I think the title offers value for money to potential buyers. For a rating I'd give Projection First Light 2 out of 5 stars. There are some good ideas here but unfortunately the one mechanic the game heavily relies on is currently buggy at best and even if the game is patched to fix the flaws I'm not sure that I could actually play through the game's other regions if they feature the same repetitive overuse of shadow manipulation as Indonesia did. Projection First Light releases tomorrow the 29th of September and you can get it from the UK Switch eShop where it's usually priced at £15.99 or from the US eShop for $19.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and Steam. And that's it for this review of Projection First Light. Hit that like button if you found it useful and let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game and my review in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe for future Nintendo Switch content and reviews and join the Star Seekers Discord server to become part of its growing community. For now though, I just want to say thanks once again for watching and until next time, take care and game on.